Hey, let's delve deeper into lesson number 37. Jesus said, this is what my father wants, that anyone who sees the son and trusts who he is and what he does and then aligns with him will enter real life, eternal life. My part, Jesus said, is to put them on their feet alive and I will raise them up at the completion of time. Now, being raised up on the last day is what the resurrection is really all about, right? The apostle Paul wrote, the corpse has pla that's planted... It has no beauty, but when it is raised, it's glorious. Put it in the ground weak, it comes up powerful. In the resurrection scheme of things, this has got to happen. Everything perishable taken off the shelves and replaced with the imperishable, the mortal replaced with the immortal. Now, having established that New Jerusalem is a metaphor for the people of God, let us now explore the reasoning behind the suggestion that New Jerusalem is a word picture for the resurrected body of believer. Throughout John's tour of New Jerusalem, inside and out, we have seen all the references to the city being the people of God. It's a city built upon the foundations of the apostles, with Jesus being the chief cornerstone. The hundred, uh, the 1,400 stadia cubed dimensions of the city and the 144 cubit thick walls are all multiples of 12, and um, that number represents, of course, the people of God. Now, the precious gems encrusted uh, the foundation are the same gems worn by the priests of Israel. So God, we know, is making a holy nation, a royal priesthood. And I think that's pictured in the gemstones. Now, only royalty can walk on streets of gold, which the city seems to be paid with. Now, within the city, the river of life, the Holy Spirit flows fulfilling Jesus' promises that streams of living water will flow from the hearts of believers. Now we eat from the tree of life, and thus we will be forever with the Lord. And the city needs no light, right? Because the Father and the Lamb inhabit, and the Shekinah of God shines from within. Now as we await the consummation of the kingdom, we know that Jesus, through the Spirit, indwells believers. So based on such inferences, it's suggested that New Jerusalem to be understood as the resurrected body of a believer. Now, one more clue for this deduction. New Jerusalem descends out of heaven to rest upon a new earth. Now, in Revelation 19, we know the armies of heaven return to earth with Jesus. And we dare not fix a location for paradise or the throne rooms under the altar. But we could surmise that the resurrected believers come down, maybe from there. Now, let's add one more thought. Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews then said, it took 46 years to build this temple, and you'll raise it up in three days. But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. Now, it, it doesn't seem so far a jump to then assume that New Jerusalem can also refer to a body. So the description of New Jerusalem is a description of the resurrected the body that believers will put on. But now you know what? It's up for you to decide if that suggestion is viable or not. 